So yeah, my name is Dan. Um, I'm just going to be talking about a poster that I'm submitting for the upcoming AICRS uh, conference. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking about using the uh, G6 micropotes transcleral psychophotocoagulation as the uh, primary procedural intervention in patients with uh, open ankle glaucoma. So I was a research assistant for uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Giovingo at Cook County Hospital. He's a glaucoma specialist. And the uh, project that he had me working on was looking at uh, transcleral cyclophotocoagulation, or TCP. Um, both uh, the newer G6 MP laser and the more <coughs> uh, older traditional continuous diode laser, um, and using that in patients with uh, glaucoma. Um, so I did a bunch of like uh, chart review, data entry, um, and then about a few weeks ago, I rotated with a glaucoma specialist at a private practice, and I asked him what his, uh, what his uh, management algorithm was procedural-wise for patients with open-angle glaucoma, and he told me his uh, primary um, treatment option, or first-line treatment option, was uh, the uh, SLT, selective laser trabeculoplasty, um, and then secondary option, second line option was uh, surgical, um, uh, trabeculectomy, or in certain cases, tube or shunt insertions. And so I asked him where ciliary body destruction uh, management uh, was in his algorithm. And he said a uh, third line for refractive cases. And I told him that at uh, Cook, I noticed that uh, we started, or they started using the G6 as the uh, primary management in open angle glaucoma patients. And he seemed quite surprised and taken aback by that. So that kind of gave me the idea to uh, do a poster presentation looking at the uh, efficacy of uh, using the G6 um, as primary in the initial procedural intervention. So this is a retrospective series of uh, 36 eyes uh, representing 31 uh, primary open angle glaucoma patients without any prior history of laser or surgical interventions. Um, managed medically, but with uh, elevated IOPs, uh, treated initially with the G6. Um, and this was at Cook County Hospital uh, from 20, 2015 to 2017. So initially, uh, I looked at data with, for every patient who received the G6. And then patients with a glaucoma diagnosis other than POAG, like SOAG or um, NVG, were excluded. Uh, patients uh, uh, with any other uh, previous history of a procedural or surgical intervention were excluded. And then I looked at an initial and post G6 IOPs. Um, patients uh, who needed multiple G6 procedures or who subsequently uh, required a secondary procedural intervention other than a G6 were also noted. So for results, uh, the average follow-up was about 6.3 months. Um, the, uh, with a number of 36, uh, the average IOP uh, pre-treatment was 25.33, and the range in that was uh, 15 to 45. The average IOP post-off one month, um, number of 33, was uh, 17.82, and that represented a 24.7% change from baseline. Uh, at post-off three months, uh, with a number of 15, uh, the average IOP was 16, and that represented a 33% uh, change from baseline. Post-off six months, uh, with a number of 16, uh, the pressure was 20.88, and that uh, represented a change in baseline of 8.1%. Um, I just wanted to talk about that briefly. I noticed that uh, it was right around this time that about the six month mark, a little bit past the six month mark, that most patients who needed, who either required a second G6 procedure or a secondary laser or surgical procedure um, required their procedure. And so there was a few patients whose intraocular pressures actually went up higher than their baseline. And so this, is kind of, this uh, variance is reflected in that 8.1%. That's why that looks kind of lower. Post-off mo uh, nine months, uh, number of eight, 13.13, uh, 41.8% uh, change from baseline. And finally, uh, post-off month 12, uh, number of five, 13.4 um, was the pressure uh, change of 34.9% from baseline. So
So I found that six of the 36 eyes, or 16.7%, required a second G6 procedure. Um, one of the six uh, required a third G6 procedure. Um, six of 36 eyes required uh, some kind of secondary laser or surgical intervention as well. And then for patients who needed a second G6 procedure, uh, there were six of those once again, the average IOP initially was 24.33, and then uh, the average IOP post-off one month was 15, and that represented a 41.1% uh, change. So just in conclusion, um, the G6 MP TCP is an effective primary treatment option um, for medically refractive or medically difficult to manage POAG patients in an urban hospital setting. So the urban hospital setting, um, uh, there was uh, definitely issues with compliance. I found that noted in a lot of the charts. A lot of the patients has issues uh, um, either coming in to claim for appointments or using their eye drops regularly or running out of eye drops and not asking for refills. Um, the procedure is repeatable, as we kind of saw in the data. Um, and probably what I think is a, a key advantage to the G6 is the relative ease of it. Um, since it's a transclerical approach, obviously, um, it, it's relatively a lot easier to do than SLT than obviously uh, over surgery as well. Um, and so it should be considered as a viable initial procedural intervention for patients uh, with uh, POAG. Thank you.